Her name is Tony Powell. I hope Saskia would take her own life, according to her own wishes. Have you noticed the date that Mrs Stanley changed her will? It was only six weeks before she died, and Mr Powell accompanied her to the solicitors. Anthony Powell, crippled with debt, his business, struggling to stay afloat, prematurely and deliberately, ended the life of Saskia Stanley. Did you know she changed her will to benefit you at the expense of her family? And that gives me motive, does it? What if Tony did what Mum wanted? She would have told us. We've not talked about the videotape. What videotape? We made it together. It, it explains everything. So where is it? It was there when I left Saskia. It was there when I went out. You just couldn't bear seeing your ex-wife with someone else. Isn't that it? No. And you'd like to see Mr. Powell found guilty regardless of the truth of what happened. Ridiculous! It's not too late. I am now willing to stand as a witness for the defence. You will not help that man get away with murdering my wife! We can pick things up from where we left off. in the right frame of mind if you're going to stand up in court, you know. You've put me in the right frame of mind. Don't worry about that. Research for Smithy on European forklift truck safety standards. You're finding time to do work for others, even with the pressures of the case? I manage the best I can. Well, it's just I've been waiting a week for your thoughts on that Law Commission study. It's absolutely the next thing on my list. Why do I always feel like I'm being fobbed off by you? That's not my intention. Do I not ask nicely enough? Always helps. Morning, ladies. Is there a problem? I haven't got a problem. Good, then everyone's happy. So we are. Wouldn't it be wise to bite your lip, at least until your vote's over? <laughs> Believe me, I am. Morning. Uh, quick word. Mm. I feel like I'm going to Business as usual, right? Business as usual.
The evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Mr. Rankin, can you please tell the court how long you've known Tony Powell? Eight years or so. And how long have you been an employee at his garage? Same. Do you socialise outside of work? Yeah. So how close would you say you were? Fairly, I suppose. Would you talk about personal matters, for example? Sometimes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes not, apparently. Uh, now, I believe you were there when Saskia Stanley first came into the garage. What do you recall of their first meeting? I don't really remember. Uh, but you did witness the relationship growing, I guess. <clears throat> uh, were you aware of the financial difficulties the business was having? Yeah. And why do you think that might have been? I don't know. You must have a view, Mr. Rankin. He could be too generous with customers and he... He never chased the payment. So what do you think it was about Tony Powell that made him deal with his customers in this way? I know what you want me to say. That he was too nice, too honest. Yeah, well he was. I thought he was, but then I didn't know he was knocking off my missus behind me back. Oh, and this is before Saskia died. Uh, Your Honour, might I take a few minutes to receive instructions from my client at this point? I rather think you should. Okay, let me paint you a picture. A devoted partner tending to the woman he loves as she fights for her life. She makes a difficult decision, asks if he'll help. Because he loves her so much, he agrees, knowing that he'll have to take whatever punishment comes his way. Only it turns out that that devoted partner was knocking off the girlfriend of his best mate. It kind of undermines the story, doesn't it? It wasn't anything. Right, and you think that's what the jury are thinking right now? I asked you to be open and honest with me, Mr. Powell. You weren't. You need to tell me the whole truth. And you need to tell me right now. It was a very foolish thing that happened when I was very low and very lonely. Where is he? You've got five seconds to think up something plausible. I honestly don't know, Nicole. I'm sorry. He might have said he was off out for a drink with some mates. Oh, yeah? What's her name? I really don't know what he's up to. I always choose a Jack the Lad. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Nothing. And he's an idiot if he don't treat a woman like you, right? How's Saskia? Not great. You know, never you complain. I can't imagine what you're coping with. I just feel real guilty whenever I'm not there. Yeah, I know. It was a huge mistake. I was feeling vulnerable. But it only happened a couple of times, and then she starts Facebooking, texting me, and, and talking about this thing we've got. We didn't have a thing. It was nothing. And believe me, I regret it more than anything. Haven't you ever done something you've regretted? Do you actually think you can do it? I think so. Actually stand up in court and defend him. Would you be angry if I did? No. It's complicated. It's your decision. Do you think Dad would forgive me? Oh, I can't answer that. I think it's between you and him. He's meeting me here in a bit. Well, then I'm out of here. You can't just avoid it. Oh, I can. That's one of Dad's cronies. I'm going. What do you want to say to Dad? Say what you like. See you later. Dan, how are you doing? You know. Your dad keeps me posted and I watched a bit of the trial. Oh, come. Let's keep an eye on things. That scumbag's going down, you know. 
And if he doesn't, he'll still make his life difficult, eh? So take care of yourself. Mr. Vaughan, I'm Valerie Morney, and I'll be representing you. Well, hello, Valerie. Shall we get down to business? Well, I like the sound of that. Right. Uh, your neighbour, Mr. Brudenell, claims he is unable to work or sleep due to the excessive noise you make when weight training. Well, I'm a personal trainer. I need to train. Your neighbour recorded it at over 90 decibels, which is louder than a tractor, a chainsaw, or a squealing pig. Well, I make a lot of noise when I get physical because I push myself to the limit. Well, um, a judge is going to regard that noise as excessive. Um, is there no way you could train elsewhere? I've spent a lot of money converting my home gym. This is my business. Uh, well. It's always better to offer some sort of compromise. How about an agreed training schedule that would avoid times when your neighbour is at home? I guess that might be a solution. Well, when we get down to court, let me talk to his barrister. I don't think we'll need to go in front of the judge. Do you work out? You look like you do. I don't get much chance. Oh, you should. You've got great shoulders. And it's good for building that upper body strength. Great for the chest. I could, uh, I could do your personal programme if you like. We can't stop her, if that's what she wants to do. Your sister won't listen to me, but she might listen to you. Do you know what, Dad? I don't know how I feel about all this. In fact, I'm not even sure how I feel about what I said in court. In what way? We don't know what happened. And we never will unless we find that tape. There is no tape. Again, we don't know. You've changed your tune. Maybe. To be honest, I'm really disappointed. I don't know how you feel. Have your colleagues been harassing Tony? What? I just saw Murray. So you do know about it. Listen, don't you lose sight of what's important. And what's important here is getting justice for your mother. Your colleagues have been harassing Tony, and that don't bother you. Keep your voice down. Do you know why I've changed my mind? It's because of you, Dad. Because you decided Tony was guilty and that was that. And that's why you don't care that he's being harassed. Because you think he's fair game. I stood up in court and said my bit and I've just ended up regretting it. I don't know what happened to Mum. It's not up to me to send Tony to prison. And it's not up to you either. another time. Please, Nicole. Just go away. I'll call you. I think she's asleep. Well, I'll just put my head in. I said, she's asleep. Dad, just let him go and see her.
Hello, darling. Oh, hey, you. Hmm. What time is it? It's about 7.30. You're back late? Yeah, well, uh, you know. You work too hard. How are you doing? Disaster. Total and utter disaster. Why? I tried to talk to Dan. Just really vaguely. Just floating the idea of... What if I got too ill? And I needed some help? And? He freaked. I mean, I just wasn't expecting it. But you'll help me, won't you? We can't do this without your family. Why not? Okay, I think we need to call Tony Powell back to the witness stand. Messler will tear him to bits. The entire basis of our defense is in pieces. Right now, the jury think the guy's a snake. If you can lie about this, you can lie about anything. We could make it worse. Right, when, when he said it wasn't an affair, it was just a mistake, mm -hmm. did you believe him? Oh, well, yeah, I did, actually. Right. Well, we've got something to work with. I told you I didn't want to know. I haven't said a word. Except to my son. I didn't say anything. You said enough. He worked it out. You're an idiot. I was just doing what you asked. I never asked you to do anything. Yeah, but you give me the nod. But I expected discretion. We're doing this for you, Gov, and your family. Who else is involved? On second thoughts, I don't want to know. Your son should be pleased. Yeah, well, he's not. Yeah, well then, you should sort some sense into him. I don't take that from you! Has Powell seen you? Oh, great. You know your problem, Murray? You're careless. You leave Powell alone now. You understand it's over, completely over. Got it? Yes, go. Oh, sleepless nights. Oh, we're coping. I've got Ed trained to do the night feeds. Oh, I can see your eyes glazing over, Valerie. Not at all. Oh, come on. You're not the baby type. You don't have to pretend. Neither were you. Anyway, who says I'm not? Oh, it's a good thing. Not towing the married and kids line. Right. Brass tacks. My client's willing to exercise to an agreed timetable to avoid disturbing your client, so... Let's put this to bed. Not as simple as that, I'm afraid. My client is seeking compensation. For what? Working hours lost through disrupted sleep. Oh, you have advised him. That's quite ridiculous. Far from it. My client works nights and sleeps days. Or well, he would do if it wasn't for your client's sweaty grunting. Which he's quite willing to put a stop to when it affects your client's precious slumber. No, I'm sorry, but Mr Brudenell's quite set on pursuing the compensation avenue. Hmm. I think this might be quite fun. <laughs> Got you a coffee, Miss Morney? I guess no sugar. You're sweet enough. Is that your client? He's a bit full on, to be honest. Come on, Valerie. You've clearly still got it. And he knows it. <laughs> Mr. Powell, did you have an illicit relationship with Nicole Jones? I wouldn't call it a relationship. But there was something going on between the two of you? Yes. And at what stage in Saskia's illness did this occur? It was after she'd become bedbound. She was on a fair amount of diamorphine. 
things were starting to look pretty bleak. So what state of mind were you in? I think that was the problem. I, I couldn't talk to anyone about any of it. My mind was going crazy. I, I couldn't concentrate on work. I was a real mess. And who initiated it? She did. But I accept that I didn't try and stop her. What would you say to the suggestion that you were, at least at that point, starting to think about a life after Saskia? That wasn't it. No. Not for a moment. And how long did it go on for? Just happened two or three times. All along, I knew that it was a terrible, terrible mistake. And is that still the way you feel? It was a stupid, selfish thing to do, and, and I regret it deeply. Unfortunately, Mr. Brudenell's after compensation for working hours lost through lack of sleep. What? I can't lose this case. I mean, I can't get a criminal record. Mr. Vaughan, this is a civil case. No one is getting a criminal record. Oh. Good. I also fancy our chances in front of a judge. Well, I'm sure you know what you're doing. I do. So, trust me. Happily. I mean, there's a lot to be said with putting yourself in the hands of experience. Is that something you've done often? Not as often as I'd like. Well, that could easily change. How often did you have sex with Nicola? Uh, Your Honour. It is important, is it not, to establish the nature of the intimacy with Miss Jones? Mr. Powell? Never. Not once? No. But it was a physical relationship? Barely. Barely? So what was the extent of the affair? It wasn't an affair. It was a small mistake. A small mistake? Well, I think we'll let the jury be the judge of that. You were intimate with Miss Jones on several occasions at your garage, were you not? Yes. Without the knowledge of her partner, who also happens to be your best friend? Yes. And without the knowledge of your own partner, bedridden, terminally ill, and in terrible discomfort? Yes. Yes. Well, help me out here. In what way is that not an affair? I made it very clear that there was no future in it. I see. So, once you'd realized your mistake, what did you do? I just thought it best to... to pretend that it hadn't happened. So you lied to your best friend and to your dying partner? I didn't lie. You lied by omission, just as you've lied in this court. I have not lied. When's the last time you saw Miss Jones? Yesterday morning. I'm sorry? Yesterday morning. And what was the occasion? I'd stayed with her and Carl. They'd been very supportive throughout the trial. And when, precisely, did you tell Mr Rankin about the affair? I didn't. So? Until he found out, you were happy to stay at your friend's house and avail yourself of his hospitality, knowing you had secretly been intimate with his partner? And while working so closely together, did you give Mr. Rankin any cause for suspicion? No. Any cause at all to doubt your position in his eyes as a decent, honourable man? I suppose not. Quite the actor, aren't we? What other secrets do you harbour, Mr. Powell? None. And 
Why on earth should the jury believe that anymore? Thanks for coming, love. Where the speech you've prepared is wasted on me, okay? I haven't prepared any speech. I honestly don't think I can forgive you, love, if you stand up in court and defend that man. I am not defending him. I'm just saying what I believe and what I know. You're being called as a defence witness. They wouldn't be calling you unless they thought you could help their cause. Why would Tony have killed Mum? It doesn't make sense. And apart from all the money he was due to inherit. She was tired anyway. I think he'd had enough. He cared about her. You know he did. He was having an affair with his best mate's missus while your mother was lying in her sick bed. Why did you hear that? His best mate just stood up and told the court. You still want to defend him? It's going down, love. Everybody knows he's a liar now. Doesn't matter what you do. But it will matter to your conscience. So please, love, think hard before you do something you're going to regret. Sorry, love. Mr. Vaughan accepts that the noise he makes is excessive, though not unusual for someone engaged in strenuous physical activity. He has attempted to make his peace with Mr. Brudenell. He has offered to train at specific times to avoid disturbing him. Indeed, he's even offered to train elsewhere, despite having installed a home gym at considerable expense. Your Honour, this case was totally avoidable. We submit that Mr. Brudenell's claim for damages is totally without legal foundation, motivated purely by a desire for unwarranted and excessive compensation. We therefore submit that this case be rejected in its entirety and Mr. Vaughan's costs be paid in full by the claimant. I uh, heard your chambers are giving you the runaround on voting you in. What do you want? Well, I just wanted to say that... Um, if you don't get the vote, the door to our chambers is wide open. I, mean, I can't make guarantees, but uh, I do hold a fair bit of sway. We need new blood, and um, you'd be valued in the right way for your qualities, not for anything else. Hmm? You give it some thought. It's a fine junior you've got there. Hope you're treating her properly. What do you want, Hessler? Not sure recalling your defendant quite came off. What do you think? I think I'm not going to discuss the case with you. That's what I think. <laughs> I imagine you wouldn't in your position, hopeless as it is. <laughs> I wouldn't start celebrating just yet. It would be no personal triumph to win this case, but it would be a moral victory. Like you know anything about what's morally... All right, boys. Playtime's over. Good girl. Keep him on a tight leash. Yeah, I know, I know, it's ridiculous. The guy just winds me up. He doesn't have to do more. I realise that. He's right, though. It's not exactly like we've had a great day. I believe, Tony. I believe it was a mistake and that's all it was. It doesn't matter what we believe. But if that's what happened and that's true, then we have to be able to persuade the jury, right? Yeah, but even then we have to acknowledge that they're never going to see him as trustworthy mm -hmm. again. Juries can be quite moralistic. No, this comes down to whether we can persuade them that Mrs. Stanley clearly wanted to end her own life. That is now our line of argument. Begin. It deserves a lot worse. Like what? 
Smash me lights in again. Set your colleagues on me. You're a coward. I can fight my own fights. You try me. I don't want to fight. Unlucky. I do. <laughs> Why? Are you serious? Saskia, you've made her own choices. You should respect that. Do you know why I'm fighting to make sure well, you pay for what you did? Wouldn't you have done the same thing if she'd have asked? She didn't ask you. You talked her into Don't it. you understand? She was dying. I just helped her die the way she wanted to. I know you're angry. You have no idea. You can't imagine how I'm feeling. You reckon, do you? You keep spouting your little story. Nobody's going to believe you. Especially now we know about your nasty little affair. You're finished. You're going down and I can't wait. videotape, the only thing that shows Saskia's wish to kill herself was the goodbye note. I think it's a mistake to focus on that. Well, why? We discredited the graphologist. Yeah, but we haven't had a witness prove its authenticity. It's not enough to hang a theory on. Maybe not. Who else have we got? Well, Saskia talked to her family about ending her own life, so we know she was planning it. And we know that she could have administered the injection herself. Yeah, so maybe we need to get a little more out of Jessica Stanley. I... Huh. Bad news? My ex-boyfriend started texting me again. Oh. Guess he's realised he's made a mistake. Well, you don't realise how bad something is until you've got out of it. Sorry, that's just from my experience. I'm not talking about your story. It's fine. I didn't think you meant anything. It's okay. Right, well, uh... I think I'm going to take this uh, work home. Okay. I think I'm just going to stay here. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you enough. Just doing my job. Well, you're very good at it. Seriously, that was amazing. If only all my clients was grateful and charming. Well, I was serious about you coming to the gym. Here. Free session. And we'll work on that programme. Okay, you're on. How about tomorrow, six o'clock? Um, yeah, <laughs> six is fine. And how about a drink afterwards? That might be tricky. Yeah, I'm sure you've other plans. It's just, it's, um, it's my fiance's birthday. And it's a big one. It's the 21st, so I can't really miss it. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, we were just having a bit of fun, and I, I didn't mean to... No, no, I, I, di I didn't mean... Uh, yeah, it was just innocent. Yeah, no, it was. It really was. I, I meant a drink as friends. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, six tomorrow. Yep, sure, sure, yeah. yep. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about it. If you felt nothing for me, you should have told me. Is it true? It's water under the bridge, just leave it at that. I don't want to leave it. I thought we had something going on, me and you. We did, but it wasn't a good idea, was it? You said if it wasn't for... I Carson. never said anything of the sort. You're putting words in my mouth. Look, I tried to be honest with you, but you wouldn't listen. That's not my fault. Oh, well. <laughs> Stupid me for getting it wrong, then. I won't bother you again. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that I'm sorry.
Sorry, did I make you jump? Have you managed to find time in your busy schedule to fit me in? Not yet, but the case will be over soon and I can do it then. But the vote will be over soon and you can't expect to win if you don't make the effort. I'm making every effort I can, Valerie. I'm sorry that's not good enough for you. Mm, well, you make an effort when you want to. It's just a little selective. I can show you the workload if you want me oh, to. Oh, I know. You're rushed off your feet. You've made that quite clear to anyone who will listen. You know, if this is some kind of silly test, then it's ridiculous. Don't act like you're doing us all a favour just by doing your job. It's the role of a pupil. You know, I don't think you'd be talking to me like this if I was a man. Are you looking for a friend from the sisterhood? A bit of positive discrimination. Just my opinion. You'd be wise to keep to yourself. This is the way things are done here, Julie. You start at the bottom, you work hard and you button your lip. We've all been there. Except you. Your father was a judge. But it was really hard for you to get into chambers. Well, we all know how disadvantaged you are. We've heard the crippling debt. Your poor mother remortgaging a house just so you could be here. What are you going to do if you don't win the vote? Are you worried that letting a commoner in might spoil your profession? Is that why you don't like me? Oh, so you're a class warrior now. I thought this was all about gender. I think it's a bit of both. You're right. I don't like you. But not because of who you are. More because you're rude and petulant and full of yourself. You might have really wrapped around your little finger, but we're not all as gullible. Good luck with the vote. You know, you're just one of those women. I'm sorry. You want to make it to the top, but you'll make damn certain no other women do. I will ensure you regret saying that to me. she talk to me that way. See what happens, I think you're rather upset. Well observed. I don't know why I bother with this stupid job. It's too much bloody sacrifice and not enough reward. Valerie, you're going to have to brace yourself for Julie sticking around. People are warming to her. They think she's got talent, even if it is coupled with attitude. Oh, I don't think I can stand working here if I have to look at her face every day. Then you better find our members a bloody good reason not to vote her in. mood. I've had the mother of all bust ups with Valerie. It was a nightmare. I mean, I wish I never opened my mouth, but she winds me up so Listen, much. Let, let's, let's not talk about that woman for a bit. Agreed. I can't tell you how much I... Thank you. 
Won't your wife wonder where you are? Uh, well, I say I'm working late, I say I'm with friends, whatever. Won't she guess? Can we maybe not talk about my wife either? Maybe I need to stop talking. Maybe you should. I don't want to talk to you and I'd like you to respect that. I know you've probably heard. Did you hear me? Are you still going to stand as a witness? Have you any idea of the position you've put me in with my family? Yeah, and I appreciate it. You don't appreciate anything. I am so angry with you for treating Mum like that. You're a pig to do that to her. I know. I don't even know the truth. Oh, I think you do. If you could just see what your mum said on that videotape. What videotape, Tony? Where is it? Maybe Dad's right and it's a figment of your imagination. Perhaps I've misjudged you. You lied to Mum, maybe you've lied to all of us. No, the tape's real. She said goodbye to you, she really did. So where is it? I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm sorry. You ready? Let's begin. To my darling son and daughter, Neil and all my family and friends. This is no way to say goodbye, I know, but it's the way that I've chosen and I hope you can forgive me for that. I want you to remember me alive, lucid and thinking of you.